Hello, everybody. Welcome to The Living Room. This is our first season and our first episode where real people have real conversations discussing real topics. Um, we try to create the show to where everybody, we want to know, like, when you're at home, or when you're behind closed doors, how do people really feel about certain situations? Uh, what do they really think about a topic? And we want honest opinions because it's better for somebody to be honest with you of how they really feel versus not knowing who they really are. So that's why this show is more created. It's more of a social media platform show. So we invite a lot of different social media uh, people on this show. That way we discuss different topics and we can try to get to the bottom or our not just to the bottom of a situation, but also to a solution that we can possibly have. I'm Chris Simmons, I'm your primary co-host, and then I'm gonna let each co-host um, introduce themselves, starting with uh, co-host number two. I don't think we have it here as to who co-host number two is. Oh, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name is Annie Alvarez, and um, I'm excited to be here. I own a recruiting executive recruiting company, so um, yeah, I'm excited to dive in and chat with you guys. All right, I guess my turn. Uh, my name is Colleen the Great. I have a uh, small business, so I own a small business. It's a mobile juice bar, it's a food truck. Um, and I'm really thankful and, and grateful for being here and doing this first episode of The Living Room. Hey, what's going on? My name's Yende. Um, I'm originally from Atlanta. Uh, I'm a videographer and video editor by trade. Um, I'll say something else and I've got but anyways I'm glad to be here <laughs> all right and on uh, today's uh, episode we're going to be speaking about uh, COVID-19 um, how it has affected um, a lot of our small businesses um, how the government has you know tried to step in to get things done in addition to COVID-19 we'll also be talking about states reopening uh, if we think that was a good idea and also some of the discrimination impacts that have been around the world um, now, I know that a few of you have small businesses, so I just want to see if one of you guys want to speak regarding uh, how has COVID-19 affected your business and also, you know, how these loans have been distributed um, to, you know, supposed to be distributed to small businesses, but actually went to large corporations. Right. I can start by speaking to that. Um, <clears throat> I mean, COVID-19 quarantine has really affected uh, my business because we Usually, um, we station our food truck in front of gyms, uh, public parks, hiking trails, and those have all been closed. Um, since we started, I think, you know, we tried to change the game in essence, doing home deliveries and whatnot, but uh, that hasn't created, or we haven't had enough momentum to, um, in comparison to the revenues that we were already making, uh, having been in business for one year. And so, the first wave of, of government help, which was, which was the ESBA loans, uh, the PPP plan, as they call it, um, ha didn't really get to me. Um, and then we start reading these articles about uh, other companies who uh, I don't consider them being small businesses, but they got you know the maximum amount of, uh, of funding, which was the $10 million, like the Lakers, for example. There was an article out there at, in the uh, Los Angeles Sentinel um, uh, that they returned the... Uh, the, the money because they heard that small businesses, businesses such as my myself, were not getting the funding that they um, they applied for, and so I, I think that uh, it has been quite a, a screw up in the in the government's um, end because they don't they haven't stipulated what was considered or has been considered a small business, and all these other businesses who apply for their loans or corporations that apply for these loans got huge amounts of money that they're not returning. So you know I can speak to that regard. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, as a recruitment firm, um, I was impacted in that every company, all of my clients, I mean, they're scared, right? It just ensued so much panic throughout all everyone, every industry, every person, it doesn't matter, age, race, doesn't, nothing mattered. Everyone was in this huge state of what do we do nobody knew specifically what this was 
nobody knew specifically how to cure it and nobody knew specifically how it was going to spread. And so companies had to put all of their hiring on hold until they figured out exactly what was going to come from the government and from the CDC. Um, and so I think, you know, very beginning of March, it was very uncertain, a little shaky. Companies were still making decisions to hire toward the middle of March where, you know, the stay at home order specifically here in Los Angeles was put in place. That was when companies really, really started to panic. And that's when I saw the impact of everyone starting to put everything on hold. They were still looking to hire, but the hope was uh, maybe in two weeks in the very beginning of April, we'll get better news and we'll resume operations then. Um, but then towards the end of March, where we know we were told that we had to stay home for much longer for the, for the next month, that was when a huge wave of unemployment came on. And that's when a lot of companies started making very difficult decisions to furlough, lay off. Um, so that impacted my business in that there was no more hiring going on. My clients were just afraid. They were trying to hold on to their staff. Um, unfortunately, I did hear firsthand a lot of companies had to lay off 30, 40 percent of their workforce, right? Because just operationally, they wouldn't be able to keep them on board. So I think the impact has been real for me. Um, but I think in speaking to my clients, they're still looking to hire. They're still going to be bringing on um, more headcount. And so that's going to change, hopefully. But the longer that we stay in this limbo period where no one's really allowed to go anywhere, businesses aren't able to resume, the harder it's becoming. So, um, so, let's, so yeah. let's, let's do this. So I, I have some information I want to share with y'all in regards to some of the companies that have taken uh, some of these uh, bailouts, and I want to see what you thought about it, um, because this has been um, a really big thing going on now that everybody's been talking about on the media. And so I noticed that a lot of cor uh, large corporations like uh, Ruth Chris um, have taken $81 million meant for struggling small businesses, but uh, Shake Shack also got the stimulus bill, but Tim, they did return that $10 million, according to a few reports and a, and a few news reports, they did return that money. Um, the thing is, so why were big businesses even allowed to take this money, and why is a large corporation like Ruth Chris, which is a luxury chain, where they pay their, their people, uh, you know, 2 $3 an hour, while these executives are making, you know, $3 million, $10 million a year? That's uh, one of the things that really bothered me. And then on, in addition, CNBC reported that there was other um, large corporations that were taking uh, money from small businesses. Um, now, the, if you, everybody's really noticing, the small business loan was only for $349 billion. However, when you have companies that's worth billions of dollars taking a huge portion of that, it doesn't leave any money for small businesses. And now we're having an issue where healthcare workers are being laid off currently right now. As you see, the, this happened in California. This was uh, reported around six hours ago that a lot of people, uh, doctors, nurses, and other uh, medical staff have been um, pretty much laid off um, amid the COVID-19 crisis. Um, and this is what gets me because, you know, these are technically essential workers. I think that a lot of our money for these bailouts should have went to these people and not, you know, greedy corporations like Ruth Chris that's in here pretty much taking money from not only small businesses, but also taking money from healthcare workers that really need this money. So I want to know what you guys thought about that. But do you think that it's Ruth Chris's fault only? I don't think it's Ruth Chris's fault only, but for them to be that naive when it says small business and you're a large corporation to get money, I have a problem with that. Like either you can't read or something's not, something's just not right. It's, what, it's what also they, just greed, you know, it's like uh, corporations being greedy, as you stated before, they pay um, these CEOs large amounts of money. And I think that, you know, some companies like um, uh, Shake Shack uh, were uh, decent enough to say, hey, you know, we don't need that money. Um, we didn't know that all these other smaller businesses 
um, were left out in the dark and we're going to return it so that those businesses can get funding. So perhaps it's not their fault, but there's also this um, sense of being, um, what's the word I want to use here? It, it's uh, being kind to one another. You know, we all live in this community which is called Earth and you want to make sure that you know, other people succeed and, and we're not, and we're just being greedy. You know, we're just holding on to the money. Are and you not, forgetting we're in America? <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I think it has a lot to do though. I think it has a lot to do with the rules too on what a small business is considered in America because Ruth Chris I think is under the small business um department because I don't think they have more than 500 employees now I don't I, I've only been to Ruth Chris in Atlanta I don't know how many other um locations they have um but I think that's where it gets confusing you know what I mean like we look at ourselves like small business I work for myself uh entertainment industry so of course I've been affected because everything is shut down well, and so and so because I'm a video editor as well, so that means I also have been able to get clients because everybody's trying to go online and figure out ways to continue to you know bring in those views and such. So I'm half and half, but I think that's where the biggest issue comes in. America has like that. What is and, small and speaking of that, you know, it's not just you know with the small businesses that's taking. I mean, these small businesses that's not getting enough money, but there's somebody out. I recently known who had a business with a big corporation, Bank of America, put it out there. They have a, a business with Bank of America. And what happened is they've been banking with them for 15 years and uh, Bank of America denied them for a loan because Bank of America said that you didn't have a line of credit with us in the past. So her answer was, well, I have to have a line of credit just to get approved for this loan so I can pay off the other line of credit. And that was pretty much her answer as yes. And that money is not meant for the banks, it's meant for these small businesses. And that's one of the things I have an issue with. It's like we are giving corporations, and I'm sorry, Bank of America was involved in that scandal. All these businesses back in 2008 was involved, all these big banks were involved in these scandals. And now you, we're giving them the option to quote unquote, give people their loans and, and approve them. I just, I'm just not processing that very well. I, that doesn't make sense to me. I mean, I think it's coming from the government, like how they rolled this out, how they stipulated what makes you eligible and what makes you ineligible. They didn't make that black and white. And so they put that in the power of these banks who are now saying, you know, these are the requirements if you want to get a loan from me. And that's, that's really the problem. Going back to the point, what is considered a small business exactly? Is there a definition? Because it doesn't seem to be a defini definition that's clear across the board. Is it a solar entrepreneur who's working for themselves or is it a multi-million dollar franchise? Are they both a small business? Because it seems that they are. Yeah. And that's where is that coming from? Who specified that? And, and, to that, point, that? and to that point, I also think that this may uh, be the biggest hoax of the century because they could not uh, help the their lobbyist friends, their corporation friends, um, and and in giving them more tax breaks. So they created this whole um, COVID nineteen. Um, <clears throat> hoax if you will for lack of a better word so that they can fund these other corporations through through this mean because they weren't specific enough they weren't cutting they weren't putting a gap or a range of measure so that you know real small businesses like ourselves uh would qualify and get the funding that we need to survive this pandemic i see and so yes. on another uh discussion just regarding uh covid19 I want to bring up something that has been uh, going on in America lately is with uh, reopening of certain states. Um, and I'm gonna uh, go ahead and uh, share an image with you, or actually a reference that has happened. Um, and this was regarding um, the US just reopened on this deadliest day for coronavirus patients as states reopen according to the World Health Organization. This was also reported by CNBC. I also seen this on CNC, uh, CNN. Uh, ABC, I've uh, seen it on Fox News, even though I cannot stand that channel. Uh, it, it is what it is. 
And so it was reported by everybody. And this is the thing, the U.S. saw 2,900 people die of COVID-19 in 24 hours, according to data. Do you think it was smart for states to reopen just with all this COVID-19 issues going on? And, you know, when you're seeing states like Georgia, where I've seen people on Instagram, on Facebook, you know, at parties, shaking their butt, dancing and stuff, and then all of a sudden, now they're in the hospital with tubes and ventilators in their throat, talking about, oh, you know, I got COVID-19. For me, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't feel sorry for them. I just don't, it is what it is. Like, I just don't think it was very smart for a lot of states to reopen that soon. Um, and I want to see what you thought. Well, there's two parts to this, being that I'm from Atlanta. Um, I had this conversation with my family. It's, it's interesting because it's like, they made it illegal to do any business. You know, at, when it first hit, you know, they were like, if you get caught, we're going to find you, da 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 And that was the right thing to do. At this point, I'm not saying that I agree with the governor or I disagree, but everybody's in a different boat. If you have savings and you're good, you can sit at home. But there's people on the other side of that track who are really in bad situations, can't even go buy food, not getting the relief. So they have to work. And it shouldn't be illegal that they need to open up their businesses. Like I know a woman who has a salon. She still has to pay rent on her, on her, you know what I mean, on her property. That's a problem with, with the government. The government me, needs to put that in place to say, hey, we don't care what bank or large corporation you are, you're not charging nobody rent. You're not charging them interest on it because that's what, uh, I know a few people that's with uh, Capital One, they have pushed their car loans back, but car, uh, as the Capital One has on their papers, oh, but you still are responsible for paying the interest. I'm like, well, what's the point? I'm like, you know, that's the thing. The interest is where, is where most of the money is at. It's, so, it's, and it sounds good. You know what I mean? Like that's what we, we wish that the government would do something like that, like the rest of these other countries, but that's not America. And so <laughs> it is what it is. So somebody shouldn't be illegal for cutting hair. You know what I mean? Like, like it, yeah. it, But I think that what um, Chris was saying, it was that um, like bars, for example, where the ones that um, were opening up and where you have, you know, our community really, black and brown folks going out there and partying. I mean, is that responsible? Maybe it was responsible for the government to open the state up so that people can work and make their money. But was the re I, I see it as like the uh, responsibility from ourselves. Mm -hmm. Like, are, do we really want to go through the parting phase? Like, yeah, go get your nails on, go get your hair done, you know, do take safety measures um, as an individual and as a business owner, take those sa uh, safety measures. But also if you're gonna go party and, and do all these ratchet stuff, like, you know, we really gonna <laughs> be hurting ourselves. I'm being serious. Like, we're but listen to this though, if I own a bar, I can't make money unless people come and buy drinks. Granted. Fucking token, like. I think for me, right, like, and this is, I just, I feel like the way that the government's rolling this out, it's like no one's really thinking, like they're just doing stuff and not taking everyone into consideration. And I think each state is different, right? Like California, we're experiencing COVID much differently than New York City. Mm -hmm. Right. And maybe Kansas is also experiencing it much differently than Los Angeles, just be by virtue of us being a very different dynamic type of city. There's a lot more people here. Right. So in terms of reopening each state, I do believe that some states may be much less impacted, but the way that they reopen has to be thought out very carefully right? right and it's not only reopening but like i do believe nail salons and hair salons are very high risk to open right away and so i think that the government needs to put in a in place a stipulation that if it's a very very high risk business like nail salons hair salons bars they should be able to reopen once all of this is done and that could be in a year right i'm hoping it's not but let's just say it takes that long they should not be required to be paying rent and utilities that's not fair because they're not going to be making income for however much longer this lasts just by virtue of them being high risk business right excuse me so i think that the way that it's being phased is not thought of very carefully Fully, not everyone's being taken into consideration properly. If they're going to be phasing it out, right? So only 
some companies can open and only in certain intervals, that's perfectly fine. But then what about the other businesses that can't open yet? What's going to be done to help them with their increasing debts, right? Their rents, their utilities, their living expenses. Everybody has to live off of something. Everyone needs to eat. Everyone needs to have the funds to be able to afford those things. So is there going to be a stimulus for that while we wait for this vaccine to be brought, you know? So I think it's fine to reopen, but it's fine to be to reopen states that are very, very low risk one, and then the way that they're being phased, right? So I don't think that a hair salon, a nail salon in Georgia should be open yet just because of just how high risk it is. But if they're not going to be reopened, then what's going to, what are we going to put in place to help them not pay their rent or not be liable for rent, not be liable for rent? Yeah. Like that's just unfair. You know, it's like you're putting them between a rock and a hard place. Like people yeah. need to survive. There was a, uh, in to uh, your point. I'm sorry, we are running out of time. So uh, we are, we will continue this discussion on another episode of the living room. I do apologize for cutting that short, you guys. Um, now we have to talk about our company, our service of today. Um, we're gonna be speaking about uh, Bonds the Grocery Store. Trying to get a better picture of them, but I couldn't really um, get it, but this is how the grocery store look. This store is only offered in um, Southern California or, or the California area, I would say. It's not offered anywhere else. Just how like, you know, in Georgia, we have um, uh, grocery stores out there that's not out here. But uh, Vons is, you know, this is their website. Uh, the website is pretty much standard for the most part. Um, they have a lot of things on here. One thing I like about Vons is that when you go in there, I would say that for the most part, you can find everything. The issues I have with Vons is that sometimes I just think that Vons just looks a little dirty sometimes when you go in there. It's like nobody really cleaned the store or nobody really stocked it. Um, and that's just my personal opinion. That's not, not, not my <laughs> your opinions or whatever. I know you and David have not been to probably California and visit the bonds, but for me, I think that it just needs to be a little bit more cleaner when we go in there. So the forest mopper, et cetera. So I want to see what you guys thought about uh, bonds, uh, grocery store and their services. Um, I don't think I've ever gone to a bond. You've never been to bonds? Are you still in California? <laughs> Listen, when I stayed in California for like six months, I don't think I've ever seen the Vons either. I see, I see Vons as like the, the, uh, the American version of La Superior, which is a Mexican or like a very ethnic Listen, Mexican. I love ethnic. La Superior. It right. <laughs> yes, yeah, so, I like it too. That's but right. I don't really care for it. <laughs> well, so, I mean, it's, it's all right. I mean, I don't have anything for it or against it. It's just, you know, it's just there. If you need something real quick, like I'll just, you know, stop by and get it. But it's not something that I frequent in my uh, from all the time. So I'll give Vons probably a three and a half stars out of five. It, it's not a bad grocery store or whatever. It's not it's not the worst. I've seen a lot worse, but I yeah. think that in terms of the prices, because their prices are very freaking high in there. I'm like for a gallon of milk and things. I'm like, ooh, that's pricey. I think that the store, if you're going to be charging these you know, high prices, I think you need to make sure that your prices match the level of your, how your store looks. So that's just my personal right. opinion if you're going to be making all this money off of it. And you like it better food for less? I'm trying to get a comparison. Because I know <laughs> it's smaller. It's smaller. It's smaller. It, it's it's okay. the same, but it's like, a, it's like a smaller grocery store. What's, where's the grocery store that's in Georgia? What, what's our famous one? I mean, what, of clean or dirty? Like, no, 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 just the grocery store. Like, what's our famous one out there? I mean, we have Publix. That's like Publix. Yes. That's like the hierarchy. You know what I mean? Publix, like, yes. And then you got Walmart. And it, needs to look like, it needs to look like Publix. It doesn't look like Publix when you go. Oh, that's I the got problem. you. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. Publix, yeah. yeah you feel like you I mean, off. is it all of them or is it just the one? Most of the ones I've been to, they just not have been very clean, clean. So that's been my main concern with them, but that's just my personal opinion. I want to see what you guys thought about it, but a lot of you guys haven't been on there or haven't researched the topic. So nice. it is what it is. <laughs> Tickets but, are $40. Right. You got me wanting to go out there now. To <laughs> <laughs> just to Come go on. to a Vons and check it out. Might, go, might catch a flight. <laughs> see what the Vons talking about. Yeah, so if, you, uh, right now. if you're ever in the California area, you want to go to a uh, Vons, see how the store is, whatever. You can always go to their website at www.bonds.com. 
check them out, see, you know, see their store and everything, um, see how you like it, you know, you never know. Um, Colleen, I guess you had a photo or video today you want to share? Yes, it is the, uh, let me put it, do I put it up or do you put it up? You put it up. Okay, one second. My photo of the day, give me a second, give me a second. Oh, he, he left us. <laughs> It's a very important photo. <laughs> important. So as I mentioned before, I am Mexican. So this is the Mexican word of the day. You guys ready? Can I get a drum roll? Go ahead. <laughs> we're, we're on the time. We got to go. There ain't no time for drum roll. Oh, OK. Here you go. Sorry. I oh, we see you. <laughs> right here. It's right here. Is the Mexican word of the day, Lysol. Donald Trump, he Lysol the time. Oh, <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Lysol. Oh, God. <laughs> There's the topic was coronavirus. Well, he did tell, oh, hey, he did fun. tell people he wanted them to inject themselves with Lysol and bleach products. So right. it is what it is. Hey, listen. He Lysol. If they're, the if they're dumb enough to do that. <laughs> hey. Right. And there were some reports. There were some reports that some people did it. I'm like, so. oh. well, I guess this concludes our uh, episode one. Uh, I am closing out the show, so I will see you all during episode two. Talk to you soon. Hi. Hi. Thanks for watching the Living Room. If you like what you see, please like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook pages. In addition to that, if you feel like you would like to be a co-host on our show. Please make sure to submit your audition tape to the liberal TV show.com or you can also submit it on one of our social media pages. In addition to that, make sure to submit your audition tape and the reason why you would like to be on our show. We'll see you next episode. Have a good day. This episode of the Liberal Room is sponsored by Juiced Up, Way Smoothies on the Go. Juiced Up is a California based company that offers smoothies and acai bowls on the go. The company accepts deliveries and you can place your order by going to their Instagram page at JuicedUpAF or for more information regarding the products, you can go to their website at www.JuicedUpAF.com.